Hi, welcome to the second chapter. Before starting this lecture, if you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all our upcoming lessons, tips, and tricks about mastering the Soroban. Don't forget to join our community on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, where we share additional resources, practice challenges, and engage in discussions with fellow enthusiasts like yourself. Join the conversation and be part of our growing community of Soroban learners. In this chapter, we are going to understand the basics of the Soroban. The first lecture will focus on the Soroban layout. We are going to discover the two types of the Japanese abacus and talk about the frame, the horizontal bar, the rods, and the beads. So let's get started. As we mentioned in the previous lecture, the Japanese abacus was imported from China, commonly known as the Soenpan, typically features two beads on the upper deck and five beads on the lower deck in each column. But after the 19th century, they removed one upper bead and one lower bead to create the Soroban. This upgrade leads to an improvement of the techniques used in both abacus. Both abacus are still used today and have their unique strengths, catering to different calculation approaches and preferences among users. In this course, we will be using the 1-4 abacus. So be careful before buying your own abacus. The frame of the abacus plays a crucial role in its functionality and durability. Traditionally, the Japanese abacus was crafted from wood. Wooden abacus frames, with their natural material, offer a traditional feel and aesthetic. They tend to be sturdy and resilient, allowing for long-term use. Wood also provides a tactile experience, contributing to a sense of authenticity and connection to historical practices. In contrast, modern versions of the abacus, particularly the soroban, can also be found with frames made from durable plastic materials. Plastic frames offer advantages in terms of being lightweight and more resistant to environmental factors like moisture and temperature changes. Additionally, plastic frames are often less susceptible to warping or damage from prolonged use. The choice between wooden and plastic frames often comes down to personal preference. Some practitioners prefer the traditional feel and aesthetic of wooden frames, while others appreciate the convenience and durability of plastic frames. Both types of frames serve the purpose of housing the beads and providing a structure for smooth movement and calculation on the abacus. Ultimately, the choice between the two depends on individual preferences, intended use, and the desired aesthetics of the user. The horizontal bar on the soroban, known as the reckoning bar or the divisor bar, is a defining feature that aids in calculation accuracy and ease of use. Positioned horizontally above the columns of beads, this bar serves as a visual aid, separating the upper and lower beads, facilitating calculations, and helping users keep track of their positioning during calculations. Its primary function involves indicating decimal points, marking the separation between integer and decimal values and numbers being computed. This pivotal component assists users in maintaining accuracy while swiftly maneuvering the beads during complex calculations, ensuring precise positioning and preventing errors in calculations involving larger or decimal-based numbers. The reckoning bar is a fundamental element in the functionality of the Soroban, contributing significantly to its efficiency and reliability as a tool for mental arithmetic. In the context of the Soroban, rods refer to the vertical columns where the beads are positioned. These columns, typically made of wood or plastic, form the structural framework of the abacus. Each rod represents a place value, with the columns increasing in powers of 10 from right to left, similar to the positioning in the decimal system. The rods are essential for organizing numerical values and performing calculations. On each rod, there are beads that slide up and down, representing specific values based on their placement above or below the reckoning bar. These rods provide a clear visual representation of numerical positions, aiding in quick mental calculations by allowing users to manipulate the beads according to arithmetic operations. The rod's orderly arrangement in the beads' movements enable users to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division efficiently, making the Soroban an invaluable tool for honing mathematical skills and mental arithmetic prowess. Beads are the core components of the Soroban, situated on rods within columns. These beads are movable and represent specific numerical values based on their positions in relation to the reckoning bar. 
Typically, in a soroban, there are one bead in the upper deck and four beads in the lower deck of each rod. The bead's positioning determines their value, the single bead on the upper deck represents five units, while each of the four beads on the lower deck signifies one unit. By sliding these beads up or down, users perform arithmetic operations and manipulate numbers swiftly and accurately. The beads play a pivotal role in aiding mental calculations by providing a tangible and visual representation of numerical values. Their movement allows for rapid computation and helps in understanding the concepts of place value and arithmetic operations. Again, you can check out our educational book for more explanations. And also our community in the social media. Hit the subscribe button, like and share. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. In the next lecture we're gonna learn how to manipulate beads in order to acquire accuracy and speed. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next lecture.